Copper is critical to our way of life. It's one of Utah's largest commodities. It's necessary for the digital age, electrical, plumbing, and green technologies. It is also produced in the final step of the copper production process at Kennecott's Refinery in Magna, Utah. The Kennecott Utah Copper Refinery has been operating and producing copper cathodes for 60 years. In 2010, the company celebrated this anniversary and the importance the refinery plays in Kennecott's copper production process. During this video, we will share our history with you, show you the modernization that has taken place at the refinery, and take you through the process for producing 99.99% pure copper cathode that is used in many of the modern conveniences that we all enjoy. The Kennecott refinery was dedicated in November 1950. Once operational, the plant completed the copper production cycle from mining through concentrating, smelting, and the final stage of refining. Through the years, this operation has undergone many major improvements and today is one of the most efficient and productive refineries in the copper industry. While the electro refining process has not changed much, the products, efficiency, and technology have. Kennecott has always produced cathodes from anodes, but at one time, Kennecott melted those cathodes into other saleable shapes that included 210 to 300 pound wire bars or vertical cast cakes, which weighed up to 5,200 pounds. The refinery also produced continuous cast cakes, which were 30 feet long and weighed as much as 15 tons. All these products were created and used to meet customers' needs, but as time passed, the Kennecott refinery limited its copper product line to only produce cathode sheets. These, in turn, are melted and shaped into things like magnetic wire, tubing, building materials, and electronic components by customers. The technology and efficiency at the refinery has improved dramatically through the years. Significant modernizations to the refinery began in 1992, when Rio Tinto and Kennecott announced an $880 million program to construct a new smelter and modernize the refinery. As a result of this modernization process, a number of changes are now reflected in today's operation. Automation has been one of the key modernizations, which has improved safety and productivity throughout the plant. An automated material handling system consisting of prepping, stripping, and washing equipment, joined together by automatic cranes and transfer cars, have replaced old forklifts, tractors, and trailers that required a significant amount of manual effort and longer periods of time to process copper. Now that you have a better understanding of the products and modernization that has taken place at the refinery over the years, here is the process of creating a cathode in 2010. First, the refinery still relies on the neighboring smelter to provide 750-pound anodes that are 99% pure. About 1,200 tons of anodes arrive at the refinery on rail cars daily. Anodes are transported from the rail cars to the anode preparation machine where they undergo seven steps to assure they meet the refinery's required specifications. Those that do not measure up are shipped back to the smelter where they are recycled to make new anodes. At the preparation station, they are weighed and measured, and the ears of the anodes are straightened and machined so they hang plumb alongside stainless steel blanks in the tank house cells. Finished anodes are conveyed to custom design racks where 47 at a time are loaded on the refinery's automated rail transfer car system and sent to the tank house. This computer controlled automated material handling system is unlike any other in the world. There are seven specially designed transfer cars that travel on three lines of track that are 400 feet long between the material preparation center and the tank house. In the tank house, the 20-ton anode and blank racks are lifted by overhead cranes, which carry them to designated refining cell locations and carefully lower them into position. After loading a cell, it is inspected in a process called lighting, or pre-charge shimming. This is to verify that there are no electrical shorts, which could be caused by anodes and blanks touching. There are 36 to 38 cells in a section, and after all cells are filled with electrolyte, power is turned on. With the electric power turned on, the electrolytic refining process begins. Copper is plated from the anodes to the stainless steel blanks for 10 days, 
during which time the blanks become copper cathodes that are 99.99% pure copper. In the tank house, there are 1,400 cells that contain 66,000 anodes that will be used to produce 132,000 cathodes. Each anode produces two cathodes, and in the process, the anode will be dissolved from its original weight of 750 pounds to about 135 pounds. After 10 days, the refining process is completed, and the 300-pound copper cathodes are removed from the cells and placed on racks. The transport cars then carry the product back to the material preparation center. Cathodes in stainless steel blanks, along with scrap anodes, are washed to remove any residual electrolytes and slimes, which are pumped back to the tank house and then to the precious metals plant to recover byproducts that include gold and silver. Cathodes are processed through two cathode stripping machines, where the copper cathodes are separated from the blanks. The blanks will be returned to the tank house for another refining cycle. After being stripped from the blanks, the 99.99% pure cathodes ride a conveyor where they are sampled and analyzed for purity. Cathodes are corrugated to improve melting efficiency in customers' facilities. The cathodes are bundled, banded, and labeled for shipping. On a typical day, about 6,000 cathodes weighing 300 pounds each are processed, producing about 900 tons of copper. A computerized tracking and analysis system allows each bundle to be tracked by weight and copper quality. Bundles containing approximately 18 cathodes weigh 5,400 pounds. The bundles are sorted based on copper quality and are transferred to the warehousing area, where they are loaded into railroad boxcars. On a typical day, about 325 bundles will be shipped to Kennecott customers. Every day, approximately 130,000 gallons of anode slimes are pumped from the tank house as a slurry mixture of solids, electrolyte, and cell wash water to the precious metals plant. The slurry is pumped into receiving tanks where the precious metal slimes settle and the electrolyte is filtered and returned to the tank house. The settled solids are processed through a series of autoclaves, tanks, and filters where precious metals are recovered and purified. The precious metals recovery process is accomplished in just five days compared to a 45-day cycle under the old process. As you have seen, the process involved in creating 99.99% pure copper cathode is a detailed and sophisticated process. It is also vitally important to Kennecott's operation. Rio Tinto and Kennecott have set the standard of excellence for the world copper industry by making safety a core value using and investing in new technologies to improve efficiency and focusing on sustainable development. Rio Tinto, a world leader in finding, mining, and processing the Earth's mineral resources, has owned Kennecott since 1989. Rio Tinto and Kennecott share the core business value of safety and the critical role safety plays in daily operations by thinking through each task, recognizing hazards, assessing risks, and controlling hazards by keeping safety first in every task performed. Rio Tinto and Kennecott also share a commitment to sustainable development, aligning our business strategy and daily practices around sustainable development helps us strengthen our operations and products, build enduring communities, and provide lasting benefits for our employees and stakeholders. As the second largest copper producer in the United States, Kennecott Utah Copper comprises nearly 25% of U.S. annual copper production. On average, Kennecott produces 300,000 tons of copper, 500,000 ounces of gold, 4 million ounces of silver, 25 million pounds of molybdenum, and 1.1 million tons of sulfuric acid, a byproduct of the smelting process. We hope you've enjoyed learning about Kennecott's refinery and the importance copper plays in modern life.